Hey everybody, Adam Savage here in my cave and I'm handling my hand-built Hellboy Samaritan pistol uh, for a reason. And that is because up until building this thing, I was always what I would call a aesthetic machinist. I could make stuff look good, but getting it mechanically right was a lot more difficult for me. This project matured me. And one of the things it taught me is when you're building something mechanical, you got to get all the way inside of it. You got to take it apart hundreds of times and keep putting it back together because you need to understand how all of the disparate parts, there's over 200 in this, how they all fit together. Now that is a key journey for any engineer working in the physical space. Luckily, there is a company local here in San Francisco that is looking to make that process more simple. Lumafield, a startup just a few blocks from the cave here, has built a plug-in-the-wall CT scanner for industry. This isn't like that big hospital device you get inside. This is a very reasonably sized device. You put a mechanical arrangement in and you can scan all the way through it looking at its different densities. Oh my God, I'm so excited about this machine. We sent them a couple of awesome things. We sent them the aluminum ball, which I hammered here in the shop. We also sent them, oh, this is one of my favorite objects in the world, a Curta computer. There are over 600 separate parts inside this, and we're hoping that Lumafield can illuminate for us exactly how they all work in concert. All right, John, good to see you, sir. Great to see you, Adam. Thanks so much for coming by. Oh man, well, I'm super excited about this machine. Tell me about the machine and what it does and how it works. This is an industrial CT scanner. Now, this is something that's been around for a while, for a few decades, but usually these things cost a million bucks. Only big aerospace companies ever have them. Yeah. This is the first one that's really accessible, so it can be used by basically any engineering group and any kind of company. You just use it to look inside stuff. Okay, I went into one of these, I had an accident with my neck when I was 17, and I went into one of these big tubes, and that, that was a CT scanner. That's right, yeah. Okay. Same so principle here. This is what we're talking about, except yours is portable. <laughs> that's right, it rolls around on wheels. And specifically for industry. So what kind of things do people need to look into inside of? So anything that's designed, and that you might have a problem with uh, you know, the design or the manufacturing, and you wanna figure out what's going on, you'd use this for. So if you design things like, the seal on a plastic part and you wanna figure out why it's leaking, you can do a CT scan of that and figure out why your part is leaking. You can look inside parts that are cast or molded and that develop little bits of porosity in them um, and figure out where the porosity is and what's going on with your, with your uh, molding. You can look at electronics and figure out why your electronics are getting, you know, the BGAs are coming apart on your electronics or the enclosure isn't fitting properly around them. Okay, so I, I would imagine then you can look in with a high resolution and see like where the O-rings are settling against each other and find places in which the manufacturing might not have done what you expect like that? Exactly, yeah. So you can figure it out with assemblies, with moldings, with electronics, with just all sorts of things. It's like- I, I remember you know. many, many years ago when Apple was first making PowerBooks, they apparently would always shoot the case in a clear resin during the prototype phase so they could see inside of it, you're giving them this view without having to do that. That's right, that's right. So if you're a design engineer and you design this kind of thing, what you've done up until now probably is you take your, your part with your seal that isn't holding up well and you encase it in resin and you let it cure overnight and then you put it through a bandsaw and you cut it in half and then you like look really close at the cross section. It takes a day, your engineer is all tied up and by cutting it open, you ruin your part and you, you probably mess up you know, the area that you wanted to inspect. So this lets you inspect anything on any dimension, uh, any number of times, you know, in lots and lots of detail that you've never had before. What sort of detail does it give that's better than just a straight x-ray? So what we have here that's different from a straight x-ray is three dimensions. Um, and this is just like a medical CT scan. We take two-dimensional x-rays from a lot of different angles and mm -hmm. then use software to reconstruct those into a 3D model. Sort of like the way that uh, photogrammetry works. If you use a drone to fly over somewhere and take photos from different angles, reconstruct it into a 3D view. Um, or a 3D visual scan, where you put something on a turntable and then rotate it. But we're doing that with x-rays so you can see all the way through it. So you get this um, full 3D model of your internal and external features. And you're not just looking at the metal parts inside, you can actually see things like different durometers of rubbers and other materials. That's right. What shows up in an x-ray is density. So if you have different materials of different densities in your part, 
we can distinguish them and you can look at them separately and see how they're fitting together. I sent some stuff over for you guys to scan that I really wanted to see the inside of. Can we can we pull them out and talk about them for a second? Absolutely. These are these are two of my favorite objects in my collection. These are Curta mechanical calculators. Um, I know that within these, there are over 600 separate mechanical parts. Had, had you seen one of these in person before? I had seen them online, but I never held one in my hand. It's spectacular. Isn't it a thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, for being an engineer, when you get to do this and you like turn it, you feel all the ways that, yeah, it's a magnificent piece. It's the world's greatest fidget toy. It's it, incredible. <laughs> a very expensive it fidget is, it toy. Is. Um, so, uh, you guys put this in the machine. That's right. And ran it through its paces. That's right. And you would never want to cut one of these open, but no. this way we get to do that. Um, now, everything in here is different grades of steel and other, other metals. Does that present any particular problems for the scanner? Yeah, the, the denser the materials uh, get, the longer the scan takes and the harder it can be to resolve some of the details. Um, so, you know, a lot of plastic scans are gorgeous, but with a long enough uh, scan period, we're able to get a really good scan of something even like this that's largely made of steel. So a scan takes anywhere from as little as 20 minutes for a lightweight plastic part, up to a couple hours for aluminum, and basically overnight for steel. Okay. So we ran this one overnight. What the machine does is it takes these two-dimensional x-rays from different angles, and that's all it does. It uploads those x-rays to the cloud, and then our software takes it from there and reconstructs them into a 3D model. So John, can I get a sense of what the scanning process actually looks like when you're implementing it? Absolutely. Okay. We can run one right here. I've yeah. got my colleague Adam. He'll walk you through. Okay, great. Yeah, so I'll start with this uh, um, impact drill. Uh, just drop that in. And all you got to do is... That's it. That's, that's and it. And you're using a bit of plant foam there. Is that what I noticed? The yeah. super lightweight yeah, well, urethane? Grab that. So yeah, this is just kind of a run-of-the-mill floral foam. And the reason why we use it is its density is so low that it's almost invisible to x-rays. Oh, that's wonderful. So yeah, we'll see when it shows up that what we'll see is the impact, uh, impact drill and uh, nothing, uh, kind of nothing else beneath it. And then when you close the store, of course, the whole thing is shielded so x-rays aren't coming out and yep. lighting us up. That's exactly right. We use over a ton of lead just to make sure that we're all safe really? uh, in the process. Yeah, and that makes these things barely detectable above background radiation. Amazing. How, what is the largest thing you can scan in here? Yeah, so if you kind of imagine a shoe, uh, it's about 175 millimeter diameter and 300 millimeters height. So we got a oh. cylinder cylinder volume, uh, and that's what gets reconstructed. Okay, and I'm assuming there are plans to make larger larger, larger volume scanning machines? Yeah, yeah, okay. certainly. Yeah. There, are, there are a lot of different ways that uh, kind of CT scanners can be valuable in terms of resolution and volume, and we're trying to kind of expand in all dimensions uh, for kind of what our offerings can be. Very exciting. So yeah, typically these require a trained operator. Uh, what you saw, saw me do just there, I just tuned the exposure so it'll kind of auto-tune the exposure and detector so you'll get a clear image. And we also have a full auto scanner. So you don't have to know anything about CT scanning at all or X-ray physics, you can just drop a part in, click auto scan, and we'll just set it all up for you. Phenomenal. And yeah. that's, we're looking at the inside of this drill here. Yep, that's right. You see it's battery and contacts going over to the switch. Yeah. Electronics going over to the motor. You see windings. Yep, and what I can do, just to kind of illustrate that even better, I'll give the turntable a 90 degree rotation and then we'll generate a new image and we can see it from the side. So when we're looking at these two scans, we're not looking at the output of this machine, we're just looking at the building blocks for the output that you eventually generate, is that right? Yep, that's right. So kind of what we saw here was kind of what we call two radiographs or two projections. Mm -hmm. When we do a scan, we might take 900 projections, 1200, even 2000. Oh, wow. And then that's the information that we send up to the cloud and then get the reconstruction. Reconstruction, it's kind of this fun inverse problem where you have all these kind of projections of the part and the reconstruction algorithm is figuring out okay, what must that 3D volume have been to get these images? Uh, it's kind of that inverse calculation that then gives us the 3D volume of the part. That's incredible. So you could, you could go to an old legacy part and figure out how much room was inside for adding something to it. Yes, yeah, that, that's exactly right. Uh, so yeah, we see that a lot for uh, legacy parts or toys that you know, the manufacturers lost the mold and they wanna kind of figure out what that initial mold was like. Wow. Uh, it's great for seeing internal things that maybe a visible light scanner wouldn't be able to see inside of. And we film frequently uh, with, the with the conservators at the Smithsonian Institution. And 
one of their frequent things they do in order to understand some of these priceless old objects that might be 50, 60, or hundreds of years old is they scan them with a, an X-ray so they can find where some of the mechanical pins are and things like that. But this would be radical, a radical improvement in their ability to see the interior, interior of these things. Yeah, we, we would certainly like to think so. Uh, yeah, it really does unlock kind of a, a new possibility when really anyone can, yeah, kind of look inside their parts, see how it was internally assembled or how things have kind of maybe not worked out uh, internally in the assembly how it should have. Uh, there's a lot of different opportunities this opens up. What kind of uh, uh, resolution can you get with this? Yeah, so this machine is capable of uh, 40 micron fine feature resolution. So if you're looking at cracks or pores, that's about what you can resolve. And that's certainly a number that we're working on bringing down even further. Wow, wow. Okay, so once you've gone through the, I'm wrapping my head around 1200 x-rays. Um, you guys did a scan on my Curta computers. Do you know how long the scan took? Yes, that's right. Uh, so that, that was set up as an overnight scan. Mm -hmm. Basically, the higher you climb up the periodic table, the longer you need to uh, kind of be shining x-rays at it to, to get through. So for that scan, yeah, we scanned that overnight. So that was anywhere between eight or 12 hours. Uh, just really wanted to get the best quality that we could out of those scans. All right, I'm, I'm really trying to hold it together, but I'm dying to see what the interior of the Curta looks like. Can we take a look at that? Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's take a look here. So we've got the, the 3D view here. And I'll go ahead and just uh, make it a little bit easier to see where we are, orient ourselves here. Okay. We can start to take slices through and oh, see wow. that internal structure here. So, and when you're doing this, what I'm looking at here on the right are the actual x-ray scans. We're, look, we're seeing a slice through, right. the, through the part. Exactly, okay. exactly. So we're kind of looking at a little 2D slice of that, that, that rich 3D, 3D volume that we've got here. So we can definitely, let's take a look down the, uh, uh, down the axis here. So we can Ooh. see all of those little axes, or excuse me, all those little axles, uh, those cams, all sorts of interesting structures here. Oh my gosh. All sorts of detail. Wow. So you can go all the way down. We're getting up to the, uh, to the top here, down again. So there's all this rich, rich, rich detail in here. We can play with the visualization settings too. To uh, you know, this is a, a steel scan, so it's a little bit you know tougher, but um, yeah, yeah. You know, we're still getting a ton of detail. You can see all the you know neurons on the outside of the uh, uh, barrel here. Look at that. And also, so this is the type two. Let's pop over to that uh, type <gasps> one scan. So I'm using a slightly different uh, uh, visualization here, so we can see this. Oh yeah, this is really, really great. So wow. Let's scrub through that. And when I'm seeing the uh, the bright the bright color, like the yellow, is that like the denser pieces? Exactly, okay. exactly. Okay, so great. yeah, the way it works is uh, uh, the denser materials uh, show up as uh, higher intensity, brighter uh, in the scan, and the less dense materials, you know, your airs, your plastics, your aluminums, uh, show up on the uh, uh, darker end of the spectrum. So so these long spiral cut uh, rods are clearly hardened by their by what I'm seeing is that they have a higher density. Does that they're, make yeah? They're a higher density, so they're um, likely. Likely, I would imagine that these are probably probably steel. Yeah. Um, so if we yeah scrub through this here, let's go ahead and make this uh, uh, bigger here. So yeah, as so we scrub through here, and oh, we can come in man. from a couple of different angles to really kind of build some context about where wow. we are in this part. Um, yeah. So what's great is we can we can take this thing apart without actually taking it apart. So we can actually yeah let's go ahead and just isolate all of the steel components here. So now we're just looking at all of the steel. Okay, now I'm looking at these, they look really well outlined. I'm looking at all these little screws here. Yeah, yeah. Now, can you then take this data and accurately 3D print a part that will match and fit in this arrangement? We can do that. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's really um, straightforward to take um, this uh, you know, rich 3D volume and pull out a, a surface. Um, so, for example, this is you know an injection uh, molded uh, coupler parts, okay. um, and you know it's got all this rich, rich detail in here. So, if you had you know if you wanted to make another one of these, um, you could you know pull out a mesh, pull out a surface, um, and then print print a copy. Amazing. Um, so this this is a process that um, you know we've done a lot for uh, actually injection molded parts. Um, so you can see here we've got a little plastic injection molded parts, yeah. uh, and then we've printed out a a copy uh, just using a you know low cost resin printer. Um, of that exact part, you know, same dimensions, uh, same same shape. Wait, so, so this part. is this is three D printed from the date from the three D data in your computer that's from the. From exactly. The scan. Exactly. So we uh, we kind of joke wow. that the uh, the machine's kind of an inverse three D printer, so the the copy where the printer is the paste. Oh my um, gosh! And it works really well. That's astounding, and 
That's just a totally amazing translation. I know that like in medical, they've been doing things where they'll scan a broken bone and be able to make a part that mates exactly. to it. Exactly, yeah, yeah. But this seems like a just a whole nother kind of game changer. Wow. <gasps> I love seeing all these screws floating in space. Yeah, yeah, isolating the screws is, uh, is a lot of fun. Makes it really easy to see if you've got them all or if you have any extras. <laughs> right, right, right. Far out. So what's great is so you know so we're seeing a lot of complexity in this part, but I gotta say of all the parts you you sent us the yeah. uh, the Gundam is really oh the Gundam really you scan the Gundam wild. right right we scan, right so we scan the Gundam so okay so here's uh here's the Gundam in yeah. you know uh, in its full three D three D glory yeah um, and what's great is we can go ahead and start to slice uh, into this guy. And you can just see there's just this astounding amount of complexity in here. So did, did, is this something that, you, that you, you built? Yes, we built this on the channel. This is my first Gundam build and it was super, oh, look at that. It is so beautiful. So yeah, what's really amazing is here, I'll go ahead and we can take a, a slice, slice through this guy. So as we move back and forth, yeah, you can see this incredible amount of complexity in here. I um, mean, and every last bit is there's a decision and a meeting and arguments yeah. about what's right and what's how should it go. That's incredible. There's more engineering in this than in like a lot of consumer products. This is really this is really wild. I felt the same way while I was building. <laughs> Um, can I see this with a little false color on it? Yeah, absolutely. So this like, guy, um, it looks like it is largely just one um, material. I think there are maybe some metal pins. Oh, so that makes it a little more difficult to start to filter out pieces of it potentially. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we can uh, threshold down a little bit and so we can start to you know, dissolve out the, the plastic. And let's see if there, it looks like there's some, maybe some metal components. Um, Looks like there are maybe some metal detailing. Uh, yeah, I don't know if any yeah. of these are maybe like chrome plated or metalized. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there in are some, some, some little, fashion. yeah. Actually, hey, we've got the guy right here. We can just take a well, look. Well, also there's stuff that's been vacuum metalized and that would also probably show oh, up a little bit yeah, differently yeah, yeah. in here because of the... Yeah, so you can see metal. some, uh, yeah, it looks like his little, uh, his little jet pack maybe has uh, some higher attenuating pieces, uh, some of the shoulders. That's amazing. So yeah, and then as we kind of open this back out again, we can just get all of this incredible detail you know, the legs are really, really wild. All those joints. I assume this guy's pretty pretty articulated. He's insanely articulated. Yeah. The, the, the complexity and the performance of the parts in that really blew my mind. Now you also scanned uh, the aluminum, the we aluminum did. ball that I that we I did. had. Let's, let's take a look at the- Look at this, it looks like one of, it looks like one of Jupiter's moons. It's wild, it's absolutely wild. And what's great is, you know, we, we did uh, get some, some insight into what's well, actually inside. This is the thing, because it's all gotta be radically different densities. It is, it is, yeah. So here's, let's go ahead and, and, and chop into this guy. So we can slice in. And, and now can I can see. see around the outside edge of this, that's the highest density, because exactly. that is the lightest color. Exactly, okay. exactly. So. Um, what we can kind of verify is what you, you know, hypothesize is that that outside was getting denser as you're compressing it, compressing it, compressing it. And but I'm the asking inside. the outside to compress the inside, which is a tall order if exactly. I haven't pre-prepped the inside. Exactly. So what's great is we can yeah, validate that this is actually much less dense uh, inside, um, at least as measured you know, by uh, x-ray attenuation here. Uh, and we can really wow. see that there's that hard outer shell here. Oh my gosh. I Look, I'm a... One of the things I've always loved about uh, working in special effects and then being a Mythbuster is it al both allowed me a deep peek behind the curtain of how things work in the world. Absolutely. I've always been fascinated by jobs and professions that allow one to do that. This is like blowing my mind with what I want to understand about some objects in my collection. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a really phenomenal tool for just, you know, looking deeper inside things and understanding them. I'm a little bit speechless with what I've gotten to see here. Thank you. This technology is really thrilling. Well, thank you so much for lending us uh, some parts to take a look at. I don't, I don't know if we've ever scanned anything quite as complex as this, as this gun <laughs> before. I got to tell you, I also missed my current computers this past <laughs> month. These are a regular thing I pull out when people visit the shop. And like at least twice in the last month, I've been like, oh, no, I can't show you that. <laughs> so it'll be happy to have these back. Excellent. Well, glad they're heading home. For me, one of the coolest things I learned while visiting Lumafield was that the CT scanner itself is like not the most important part of what they're doing. It is just a tool that gives them data. What they do with that data is they build incredibly detailed 3D models of the items that they scan. My favorite part about that is that those scans are web-based. So if you click on some of the links that we're including in the description below, you can do your own fly-throughs of the aluminum ball that I hammered or the Curta computer 
or the Gundam. Also, if you have ideas about objects about this big in this shop that I should scan, yeah, I'd love to know your suggestions. You've gotta click on some of these links. It just gives you a totally different view about the insides of stuff.